So, uh, as you see, I record my sessions. Uh, why do I do that? Uh, many students like to review, and then they didn't get certain part, and especially um, we are all English's fourth language over here. So because of that, because of that, uh, we need to, we need to sometimes. And, and and I'm not a native English speaker, so my accent, I don't know what it is. So if you can't understand me, my apologies. But you can view it a few times over here. And, and and but but that's not a primary thing. Remember, don't think that you can't come to class because there's a recording. You just saw what went wrong, okay? And it's going to happen. Battery's going to go off, the thing's not going to record properly, something's going to happen, and many of the recordings are going to get lost. So I'll try to put them on as much as I can, but I, if I can't uh, and things go wrong, there are always backups for it, which means if you go to the organization that we have, you have the links for it in your uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, in my Seneca uh, subject, when you go into it, uh, you come to this organization, you see it's, uh, by the way, my name is Fardad, F-A-R-D-A-D, Fardad, okay? Please don't try to call me Mr. Soliman Lu or Professor. I don't have a PhD, so um, don't call me Professor. I am Fardad, and uh, that's North Archive, the things that I've done in past, I don't know how many years, and you click on any of them, and you can just go over there and, and open up any of the sessions that we have and watch the recording. So if, if they're all there. So if something goes wrong and something's missing in some section, you can always go to the backup. Backups are always good, okay? So you saw that, right? <laughs> okay, so OP244ZAA, uh, that's you. Um, course information. Uh, I'll bring up the announcement, go through the announcement first, uh, and then we're going to go through that. Uh, today is going to be the worst uh, and kind of most boring session that we're going to have because it's going to be talk, talk, talk. If I have time at the end of the class, I'll start the OP244, which is the concept of object orientation. So, um, I walk a lot, so I'm going to put it over here. I don't want it to go, yeah. Um, I've been doing this since uh, 1996, so you do the math, see how many years, I don't know, 20-something years, and uh, this is what I love to do. So, um, the at the very beginning of the class, I, I start my class with a promise, and, and the promise that I'm going to make is that after this semester is over, you will know about C++ and object orientation good enough to start programming, okay? And uh, to be able, to, you're going to know much more about C++ and object oriented programming, obviously, than what you do it now. Now, some of the, you are here with master's degree already in computer science. If that's the case, that's not my promise to you. But if you're not and you are starting to program, that's the case. But there's a condition goes with that, which is uh, you need to uh, try to do what we are doing in here on your own. I know you don't. Chat GPT, friends, I know. And don't kid me and tell me, no, we are not, no, you don't do that. I know. But you need to at least understand what you're doing, okay? And that is my goal. If you do your workshops, uh, Take part in sessions and quizzes. Don't ace them, okay? Just try to do your workshops. You're gonna do the two tests that are, that are the most important things over here very successfully. I guarantee that. That's my promise to you, okay? Um, I'll try to keep this relationship more like friendship rather than teacher and a student. And uh, you will see it. But for this to work, I have to be a good teacher and you have to be a good student. If either of us breaks this contract, which means I'll become a bad teacher and you become a bad student, then that friendship doesn't work anymore, does it? Right? So, so we have to do that. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, it's in our DNA. As soon as you put your bum bum on that seat as a student, you procrastinate. That's what it is. Okay? <sighs> Don't. 
please, this is important. You have to start everything right from the beginning. And uh, something extremely, extremely important, and I'm going to actually open something over here if I can. We'll wait for three years. It's going to come up soon. Oh, it's, it went to the other one. And so for some reason, it opened something. It's in the other page for some reason. I don't know why. Just give me a second. It opened the barrier. Be exact. It is extremely important. Any of you have ever seen all these movies or have been involved with guns? When, you, when they give you a gun, they want to teach you how to deal with the guns. They never point it at anyone. You don't say why. You follow that. Although they say it's, it's empty, I know there's nothing in it, but then boom, somebody's head's going to get blown up, right? Why do they do that? They give you, so you don't question those type of things. I want you to treat your study, not only in this class and in all the other class, is follow first, then ask question. Okay? That's how you learn. Okay? I'm going to tell you, we are doing driving. I'm teaching you how to drive. I'm going to say, stop! You're going to say, why should I stop now? By the time you ask that one, you're hitting the tree, right? So first stop, then ask. When I ask you, step number one is to do this. Step number two is to do that. Step number three is to do this. Don't think these are just something wish list that I'd like you to do if you want. No, I really want you to do that. Okay? So all the steps that you see for workshop zero that you have seen, they are a series of video. Every single one of them must be done exactly as I tell you to do. If you do it and you say, ah, it doesn't matter. It's got to be in one line instead of three lines. Who cares? No, I care. It has to be the same. You're, you are becoming programmers. You are actually learning how to work with a gun. And I know some of you guys are looking at me right now like, what is this idiot talking about? I'm telling you, when you write your code incorrectly, planes crash. Trains collide. It's not a joke. You have to be obsessed with what you are writing. I don't know what your goals are of being in this class. You, I don't know what just to want to get your PR, or you just want to, I don't know, I thought if half of you went, <laughs> yes, yes, I know. If that's the case, fine, but you are here. You have to pass this course. And for that, please follow the instructions. Be exact, be obsessed to, to follow the instructions properly, and you will be fine. We have lectures, not as boring as this one, but actually good and nice ones coming up. And then after that, we have lab. Lab, sometimes the lecture leaks into the lab, which means we don't finish the lecture now. We'll continue it in the lab. Labs are kind of a help me sessions with your workshops, OK? So you start your workshops. And after you start your workshops, if you hit any walls you in a lab, you ask questions. That's how this is going to work out. Labs are not where you start your workshops. Workshops are essentially homeworks. We call one, one of them lab and the other one DIY. The lab one is the one that is very much guided. When you look at the, uh, the instructions, you should theoretically be able to follow the, follow the instructions and do everything. Uh, that's the lab part. The second part is like what I call DIY. Well, we tell you what to do, and it's open-ended you do it yourself, OK? So these are the two parts. Uh, that's the first half of the semester. The second half of the semester, uh, uh, you only have part one, which is the lab part, the one that is fully guided. And then you have a project. And the project has 10, five milestones. First four milestones, you are building the engines of your application. And the last one, 
you are building its user interface. So essentially you're building the engine and stuff, and at the end you're building the steering wheel and the pedal, and the, so, so that you put all the things together. That's why your first four milestones must be submitted. Late or on time, they must be submitted. You, what mark you get, it's not important. You have to submit the first four milestone for your project to be considered submitted. And then the last milestone, that is the application, it has several features. To make its submission easy, we divide the several features into six small submissions. So instead of having one ginormous thing to go through everything and you make a mistake and the last one and say, shoot, I have to do everything from the beginning, we, we split it into six parts and each part of those things have 10%. So you get 40% for the four milestones, and each single part of the milestone in a project that is successful, that gains 10%. You are going to have code review with me. What is code review is that I'll send you a message that I'm going to uh, have a code review with you on workshop four, six, and seven. OK? So what happens, you're going to have a meeting with me, and I'm going to ask you, what does this part of code do, do in your workshop for? You have to be able to explain it to me. If you can't, the mark for that thing goes zero. You need to explain how your code works. If you don't, it means you didn't write it. As easy as that. Feedback. How do I give feedback to you? Feedbacks are very robotic, which means I'll send you links of what mistakes are in your workshop if I have time. Okay? Uh, but voluntarily go through code review with me, which means book an appointment with me and say code review for workshop seven, for workshop two, for workshop one, for whatever, okay? We're gonna have a half an hour session. I'm gonna go through your code and tell you what your mistakes are. So if you wanna know how you are doing, you are mature students. You are not kids to be forced to do anything. But you can book an appointment with me and, and do it as soon as possible. So after one or two workshops, immediately book an appointment with me and tell me for that, I want you to take a look at my workshop too and see what I did good and what I did bad. Then I'll go through it. Of course, those who you initiate, of course, you're just asking for my guidance, there are no scrutiny over there. But the ones that I initiate, you need to know how your workshop works. Um, I don't have office hours. Nine to five every day, you have to use scheduling assistant to book an appointment for, with me from nine to five every single weekday. Weekends, family days, please don't, okay? Unless I ask you. Something happens and I'm gonna say, I can't do it today, book me Saturday at 10. If I told you that, then do it. But before nine, after five, please don't. That's uh, family time. Uh, but um, how to do it, I'll show it to you. We're going to go, with, go through it in a second. We talked about recording. Uh, quizzes, uh, weekly quizzes, we're going to have as much as we can. I'll aim to 10. Sometimes it becomes 8. Sometimes it becomes 12. I don't know. Okay? We aim to have a certain number of quizzes. Uh, and, but the total always remains the same. The percentage of all the quizzes is going to be the ones. Workshops you know, final project you know. Midterm tests, you're going to do it before the study break. That's 20% of your uh, subject. Final assessment is 40% of your subject, which means 60% in your tests. Uh, and you have to have a weighted average of 50% between the two tests to pass the subject. Weighted average means 33% of midterm, 67% of the final. Okay, so um, you multiply the values, see what it comes up, and that's going to be your weighted average. Um, oh, did I? I did it for everyone then. This is like, I, I repeated it. Yeah, I am professor, name goes over here. So I send it to all the other professors at OP244, and I tell them, this is how I do it, if you want to change it. So <laughs> I did it like that, so let me fix this one. I thought it, I already did it for my other OOP244, but it's for this one too. Let me, let me fix it. <laughs> Edit. Professor name goes over here. All right, so for recording, I think because uh, 
I'm, I don't think anybody else actually records the sessions. That's why for the recordings, I actually mentioned uh, remove this one if you're not recording it. So um, is it here? I think it's this one, right? Did it delete it? Yes, it did. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, okay, delete this if you if you don't record your sessions. <laughs> Save. <laughs> so I'm posting it again. You're gonna receive a proper message now. All right, uh, going back to the. <laughs> All right, so so um, emergencies, things happen. Okay. Um, Accidents, problem uh, with uh, family problems, all these things happen. I promise again that no emergency or dire situation will cause any problem to your marks. If you sincerely show me that you had a problem with anything, I'll try to give you a way to make it up. But that's to the extent of your knowledge of the subject. If something happens to you and you cannot attend the lectures for half of the semester, then you don't have the knowledge to pass it. It's not something that I can do. I can, if you miss the, a workshop, if you miss a test, even final assessment for some emergency reason, I'll make sure that you do it again, okay? There's no problem with that. But if uh, you don't come from the beginning to the like last two weeks of the semester and then tell me at the end of the two at the end of the semester like i couldn't do any of the workshops and, and is there any way that i can pass no it's not okay so you need to attend you need to or unless you show me what that you have the knowledge uh, which in 20 almost three decades it never happened ever never i had Students that came right at the beginning of the semester and told me that I know this perfectly. And I said, okay, I'll give you a test. I gave them a test and they aced it. They knew more than me. Those people I understand. There are lots of geniuses around. I know that. But um, if you are learning this, then it happens. So we, I'm adding one more thing that I'm going to add it to as an announcement and tell you. Last two weeks of the semester, I will not be available. I will not get any messages any appointments, nothing at last two weeks of the semester. Why? Because if you need help, you should ask now. When you do the first workshop and you see you have trouble with it, book an appointment, let me help you. If you have any problem in workshop three, ask. If you do your midterm, ask. Pass midterm. So if you start at the beginning of the semester, 90%, you're going to make it very nicely. If you go halfway, one quarter of the semester, it becomes 70%. Midterm, it becomes 50%. 75% pass, it goes 25% chance that you will pass the subject if you want to suddenly start working. And that's very slim. So please, I beg you, if you see trouble, if you see you don't understand something, book an appointment in early time so I can help you with them. Please do so, okay? Please don't let it stay. If you, and you say, I'm going to ask tomorrow. I'm going to ask tomorrow. Don't do that immediately, okay? And if there is any trouble, I'll try to uh, I'll help you with it. So that's that. Um, uh, with the content of the thing, we're going to have course information. Uh, um, the very first thing that we're going to go over here is this one. Let me just see if I have audio in here. Ani, Sego, Pegu Tit, Niwi, Kidme, Mumpy, a young. Anishnawek Asian Kazant Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation Mige Windak Pine Gayat Mampia Ake Bojo Wache Beshaga Mampi Williams Treaty Ge We are on the land of the First Nation of Canada. 
and take this seriously. I know you are here. If you're here just to visit, read about them. If you're here to stay, really study them. Um, I cannot put enough stress about it. This is not something political. This is not something I'm not trying to be woke. This is uh, real. Um, uh, the indigenous people of Canada paid a very high price for us to be here. Okay, they went through hell, and you need to know that. You need to go through it, uh, study it, read it, follow the links over there. It's a good idea to do that as a, I don't know, uh, whenever you have some extra time, to read about them. The, the first time I did that, I had tears in my eyes in, for a week. So this is something that you really need to know. It, it is, uh, um, uh, it's not just... Uh, an acknowledgement. It is uh, something that I encourage you to uh, have a little research on. This is important. Anyways, um, the uh, addendum is right over here. This is where the, the test is going to come from. <laughs> okay, your your first quiz is going to come from. Go through the addendum, understand it, know exactly what happens, what are the percentages of every piece of things that we have, and try to to learn what it is. Uh, then uh, mm, uh, the conditions uh, in which uh, you'll be able to pass the subject uh, achieve a grade of 50 percent uh, uh, of uh, a weight, uh, weighted test, uh, a weighted average of the test, 50 percent in the entire thing, and successfully submitting the project. When I say successfully submitting the project, you may submit all the four milestones late and get zero in them, and only submit one of the submissions of uh, milestone five, so you only get 10% of the project, but it's still successfully submitted, okay? Successfully submitted, it means the four first four milestones submitted successfully, and at least one of the uh, milestones uh, one of the submissions of Milestone 6 is submitted successfully. You do that, and then you're fine. I have many people tied up because they didn't submit their project. They have 70% average, but because they didn't submit their project successfully, they got it incomplete, and they are still running after the mark because they cannot register for OP345. Okay? So make sure that these are very simple steps that you have to take. It's not uh, difficult. And if you, if, you, um, if you are almost on time on these, you're not going to have any trouble. I guarantee no stress whatsoever. If you procrastinate, you'll be in trouble. Okay? So this is the, um, the, uh, the, the place that you're going to be in. Uh, for work when you create your GitHub accounts, make sure you watch the repositories that are important for you. Don't watch the archive. When I say watch, it means activate the watch option of GitHub. When you activate the watch option of GitHub, any change in a repository, you will get a notification. So don't watch the archive because it changes every semester. It's, there's nothing change over there, right? But watch the notes. Watch the project, watch the workshop. When you do this, we set up workshops and we post it. And these workshops are being redesigned every semester. And because of that, mistakes are in them. We have typos, we have mistakes, logical stuff, things happen, right? Then we fix them. And you need to immediately know that. When you watch it, you will see that it's, you're going to get a message saying that this thing was committed, this uh, thing was changed, and so on and so forth. So, Go through it. It's important. <clears throat> uh, the notes, everything's going to be there. So your place is going to be in ZAA over here. All right. And uh, Workshop Zero, please go through it. Uh, Mac users, uh, many of you have Macs, I see. Um, uh, me, I don't like Mac computers at all. I don't like the company. I don't like Apple. Apple is an evil company. I don't like them. Very crude, very, they're, they're, they're bullies. I don't like it. But uh, I, I'm, I'm a Linux person, and for sake of my family and my students, I work with Windows. 
you see that, right? Because uh, there, there are things that uh, we need to, I need to teach that uses Visual Studio so I have Windows over there. Okay, if I was teaching data structures, it would have been a Linux machine, not a Windows machine. So mm, what I'm saying is that uh, if your uh, Mac is not one of those mobile ones, some of the Macs have M, M, uh, M1, I think, something like that, processors. Those, type, those you cannot install uh, uh, virtual machines on them. But if you have a Mac that is like Mac Pro or something like that that can support it, install the Fusion. Uh, it's free for uh, students, and you can install Windows on it. Um, uh, who knows what is a virtual machine? Ah, by the way, I forgot to tell you, my class is full duplex. Anybody pass data uh, networking? Full duplex, half duplex? Half duplex is radio or TV. You sit, you watch, they talk, they hope that you're listening to them. Full duplex is a two-way radio, like a ham radio or one of those walkie-talkies. You talk, the person says, got it, what next? I do. Or you say something, I didn't get that, repeat it. So full duplex, which means you're going to respond to me. We'll talk. I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to ask you questions. So anybody knows what is a virtual machine? Oh, go ahead. So a virtual machine is a machine that we don't have a physical access to. We access to it remotely. That's remote access, that not virtual. Nice try. I like it. How about you? Running any operating system with, uh, within a virtual machine. So, no, you didn't explain what a virtual machine is. You told me how to use a virtual machine. What the virtual machine is? Uh, it's a virtual place that uh, lets the, another OS uh, connect to the kernel through another o OS. Kernel? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's close enough. And uh, let's see what is the last one. It's like uh, an emulator. You emulate the that's system a good operation. One, yes, emulator. So it's something that emulates. So what happens is that it's a software that emulates a, a, a CPU. It's a software that emulates, like you buy a computer, you turn it on, what happens? Brand new computer. Not Apple Schmapple. I'm talking about like desktops. You buy a desktop that has no brand, nothing. You turn it up, the iOS comes up, beep, 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 and says no operating system. The virtual machine is that. So it actually, they build that and you install it on your machine. So when you run, a window opens as if you have a blank computer with nothing on it. We don't have virtual machines. I don't know. Maybe we do something. Maybe Apple has it. I don't know if you can run Apple on a virtual machine. But, but every other operating system has it. You install that virtual machine. It becomes a blank computer. So a window of your computer becomes a computer by itself. You can install Linux on it. You can install Windows on it. You can in install anything you want on it. Okay? And so... But Fusion helps you with that. So if you install Fusion VMware on your Apple, you can install any operating system on it. The good thing is that it's a program. When you shut it down, it doesn't use any resources of your Mac. You have something on Mac called Boot Camp, if you've heard about it. Boot Camp literally uses half of your <laughs> hard drive. So you lose half of the resources of your computer to having that one. Okay? With this one, you say, I want 60 gigs of hard, but it only uses 10 because that's the size that is. If it needs more, it's going to expand the size. So first of all, it's a beautiful place to test stuff, okay? Something you want to do and you're afraid that you're going to screw up the setup of your computer, that's thing. We used to have something called Hackintosh. Somebody hacked Mac and actually made it installable on these virtual machines. Uh, I don't, uh, but that was like 20 years ago. But yeah, so install this one, then you can install Windows 10. All these things come to, to you. You can get it for uh, extreme discount price, like $10, $15, or even free. I don't remember what it is, but you can install Windows. This one is completely free for, for, for students. You can install the Fusion VMware on your, on your Mac. It's free. And Windows, the same thing with your Seneca account. Either you get it extremely cheap, less than price of a burger, or um, you... Uh, um, what you call it? Uh, you get it for free. And also, when you install, when you uh, create an account on GitHub, make sure you set it as a student. I'm a student. Then lots of offers will come in. You gotta get many things for free. 
many softwares that you have to pay hundreds of dollars for free because of that. So do that too. Okay? If you install that, it will be nice. Bec the reason I'm telling you this is that um, and it's not that I am pro Windows or whatever. Like it or not, they own half of the industry. Th like, if you want to work on a Windows version of Chrome, which is an open source thing, you need Visual Studio. If you want to any type of .NET thing, you need Visual Studio. There are so many things out there that are needed, and it's a beautiful integrated development environment. Many people on Mac use Visual Studio Code, which is essentially the text editor type of a thing of Visual Studio with no compiler behind it. You have to put those things together yourself. It's kind of a, uh, yeah, but anyways. so. And it's an amazing tool to teach with. You'll see. I'm going to use it. You'll see how I'm going to use it to go through my code. So, and you need to learn it for many things in future in, uh, in Seneca. Don't worry, for all those Mac people, we have iOS classes. You can actually take a class that actually you learn how to develop applications specifically for, for iOS operating system, which is your Apple phone, app, iPad, or your, your computer, your Apple computer. So we have all those things. But... Uh, this is focused on that. You can still use your Xcode. I'm going to send you uh, a link to show you how to set up your Xcode to run programs with and stuff. But if you do something like that, I am really not good in Mac. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the videos. And you've seen in, the, in Workshop Zero, I, I actually borrowed my daughter's 10-year-old daughter's computer and did the Mac thingies on that to demonstrate to you how the SSH keys and stuff are installed. So I did that. I did all that. But please, uh, um, um, if you can, uh, have the uh, uh, virtual machine installed. If not, then uh, it's fine. For those people who had problem with IPC 144, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I did a review. Uh, I, I called it uh, 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 IPC. I called it uh, IPC 144 for OOP 244 students, and that's that. So we had like a marathon session. We started on a Sunday morning around I think like 10 o'clock, and we ended at 5 o'clock. You know, something like that. I went through all IPC 144 from beginning to the end with review and code and everything. These are the recordings for it, part one and part two. So if you click over here, you can go through it. Um, if somebody did that in, uh, um, actually, I think I have another version that has timelines too. I have to go f look at, look in the archive. If you go look in the archive, I, I had, I did this several times and I remember at one time, one of the students actually put the timestamps on it and actually said at 342, it's talking about pointers at this time. So, but anyways, and this is all the code I have written over there. So if you click over here, you see all the source code I have written over there. If you passed uh, IPC 144 in a uh, iffy way, or you weren't happy with your performance over there, spend the weekend, go through that, and follow the codes and test them. It's gonna give you lots of uh, uh, strong base to start the OOP 244. I don't have any physical office. My office is always on Teams. Install the app. Do not use the web version. Install Microsoft Teams app on your machine, whatever machine it is, there is an app for it. You can actually install it. And when you click over here, it actually brings you to the uh, Microsoft Team um, uh, channel of uh, OOP244, NAA and ZAA that I'm teaching. So. There you go. Uh, many people already asked to uh, asked for uh, uh, to be joined. Uh, so uh, all those I will accept all. Okay. So all those things that uh, I mentioned, uh, uh, I will add all the students automatically anyway. But if you click on it and you are not a member. It tells you want to join. You click, and I'll and I'll get you in. And I don't care from which section you are. If anybody else is listening to this recording, if you are not in NAA or ZAA, I don't care. You can join that, and I'll help you. It doesn't matter, okay? But I only do it through that one and nothing else, okay? Which means 
there are certain rules and stuff that we are uh, we are going to to use, uh, uh, which is uh, you're going to go through your workshop zero. That's mandatory for my classes. It's not optional. You create your repository and. Uh, you clone your repository. I'll go through GitHub today and I'll tell you what it is. You clone your repository on your computer and you do all your school fork for OP244 at least in that cloned repository. So a repository is essentially a directory on your computer. So when you create that repository on GitHub and you clone it, you're going to have the identical thing on your computer. So you open that directory, you do everything in that directory. You live and breathe OP244 in that directory. And you keep committing your code. A commit is a time you can come back to. So say I are at home, you are doing workshop five, and then you have to go to washroom. You say commit, and for the commit you write, going to pee. You run to washroom. You come back, you continue your work. And then after four hours you say, damn, I screwed everything up. I wish I could go back to the time that I was going to the washroom. You can do that. You can simply say, return to the time to going to be. It's going to do that. Okay? So it keeps track of every single commit. Every single commit is a time to come back to. One of the most important ones is Fardad's fixes. So what you do, you do your work on your repository, and if you followed workshop zero, you add me as a collaborator to that. So I have full access to it too. So when you book an appointment with me, you send me your GitHub. Right before you want to talk to me, you push. Push is a Git version of upload. You push your repository, which means you push it, you upload it to GitHub. Everything will go to GitHub. I open up your repository, I pull. So I download all your stuff on my computer. You tell me I have problem with Workshop 5, I share my screen, open up Workshop 5, go through it for you while you are listening and looking at the screen. Any fixes and comments that I do, I do it over there. I test it, everything is good. I save, I commit, write for that fixes, push to GitHub. You pull, you get all my changes. And you click on the commit, it brings two screens up. At left side, it shows what the code was before my commit. At right side, it shows it was after. And you can see exactly what I did to fix your code. Your responsibility is to reflect on that. That's the only thing you have. So when you come with problem with workshop, you have to tell me what is wrong. You have to tell me what did you do to fix it and it didn't work. And give me the repository path. I'll fix it for you. You reflect on it. Done. Okay? That's how we do help. You reflect in a thing, say, you fix my code by doing this and that. I went extra, whatever the thing was, you mentioned that. Okay? So that's how we do help on Microsoft Teams. Again, no office hours, you book an appointment, I accept the appointment, and we're done. I specifically in here, uh, in the addendum, when you look at it, in the addendum, I put here expected response time 48 hours. Please understand that I'm not only teaching the OP244, I'm actually managing the whole subject, which means all the workshops I have to post, I have to test, I have to make sure the submitter is correct, everything's over there, I have to fix all those. So it, it, it's really time consuming. So if you, it's one o'clock and you book an appointment for 1.30, most likely I won't even see it, okay? So. There are two remedies for that. Number one, try to book your appointments 48 hours in advance. Okay? Like that, I will see it. I will either accept and or decline it so you know what's going on. Number two, at any moment when you open your Microsoft Teams, look at... So, if that circle is either green or yellow, you don't need to ask me if I can call you. Just call me. Okay? You don't need to book an appointment. If you see that's green or yellow, just call me. If I can answer you, I'm going to answer say, yeah, what's up? If I can't, I'm going to probably answer you and say, sorry, I'm busy right now. Call me later. Or if, it's, if I'm not there, I'll come back. I see I have a missed call. I call you back, or I'll ask you what happened, and I'll 
yada, yada. So if urgently you want to talk to me, do that. Urgent means you had a problem, you tried to fix it for three hours, you couldn't. Now you call me. Not that as soon as you see a syntax error, let me call for that. Because many students do that. Please don't. You need to have those conditions with me. Okay? So that's that. That's how you contact me. Uh, what else? Appointments, contact. Yeah, and 9 to 5, please. Okay? When I say 5, don't book an appointment on 5. Put it on 4.30, so by 5 it's done. <laughs> okay? So that's that. Uh, I think we're good. So let me bring that. Where did I put it? Wow, people keep requesting to join. I'll 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 add them soon, but uh, for now I don't have time. So. How to videos is essentially, I put that thing for all students in, uh, in OP244. So they see how to create stuff. But these has, this has 11 steps. Yours is 12. The 12th one is to add me as a collaborator. Okay? So this is exactly workshop zero, but 12 is the added thing. I just received so far all the requests, all the. Uh, um, uh, all the requests for. Uh, uh, to add me as a collaborator uh, was perfect except one that um, didn't have a readme file, didn't uh, set the dot git ignore properly, an empty thing and add me as a collaborator and I immediately opened an issue. So in, in uh, GitHub I can actually open a gishu, gishu, issue. I click on an issue and I mention over there this is the issue with the thing. So if you see there's a message coming up, click on it and you will see I'll send you a message in issues. You can open up an issue, okay? So uh, you can fix that. Subject outline, take a look at it. Uh, the, uh, please note that the subject addendum overrides the information stated in the subject online. Okay, so if you, uh, uh, subject uh, outline. I said online? <laughs> that should be fixed to outline. Okay, so if you click over here, there are stuff over here. If you see they are not matching, Addendum overrides the subject outline. Remember that. Things in the addendum, what, that's the meaning of an addendum, okay? So the addendum overrides the, the subject outline. Faculty information and help. We are getting to the end of all the boring stuff. So faculty information, everything's over here. So uh, I'm mentioning how to do it, and this is where I put how to use scheduling assistant. I did it once for IPC 144, and my, my lab assistant was over there, so he helped me. I actually demonstrated how to use scheduling assistant. Scheduling assistant, what it does, when you add the, uh, the people who want to attend the meeting, it shows all their availability. So you can actually find which one is available, where, is, where it is, where do you have a common time between everyone. So you can use that. <coughs> Um, uh, online office has helped. It's a link that goes to Microsoft Teams. Weekly schedule is our schedule. Um, uh, my schedule, I have no idea why I put it over there. Everything is on calendar. So this is absolutely not needed. When you uh, check my calendar on Outlook, everything's there. You know exactly when I'm free or, or not. So that's a kind of a redundant thing. Um, the weekly schedule for the semester, they're all over here. So these are the things that we are doing. That reading part over there is completely redundant. Essentially, we, we copied anything that we had over there. It was right over there. It's copied over there. It's copied over there. So we're essentially saying before coming to class, have a glance. So this is how our quizzes are work. In IPC 144, you were doing the quizzes on the material to come, right? Okay. I don't believe in that. Okay. I, I rather you have a blank brain for me to fix, not to, not to have some incorrect information and try to correct that. That's much more difficult. So what I ask you, to, my quizzes will have some questions from the other, but I'm just going to ask you, what am I supposed to teach? Not what's inside. 
Okay, so in here you're going to have questions of what am I going to teach? So you're teaching member function and privacy next week. That's a question. But please read it like you are reading a storybook as you want to go sleep. Don't try to understand it deeply. Just get an idea what we are going to talk about. Please don't study it. Just go through it, then come to class. I'll tell you what the material are. And then after that, you're going to renew those material with the quiz that asks questions about what I taught you. And we have all those things. And it tells you exactly what it is. Please start right now, OK? Please start right now. Don't, don't procrastinate. I know everybody wants to go beer drinking and partying. Is at the beginning of the semester. We have not much to do. In here, you do. You have to uh, do lots of stuff. Midterm and final tests are going to come up. Nothing's on paper in my class. Everything's on computer. When you come on a computer, I'll lock everything up. The only thing you're allowed to have open is Notepad++ and the test. All other websites, everything is closed. So you can't go on anything. And I asked the IT, the co-pilot is removed from Edge, and the only thing you can, you're allowed to open is Edge. Okay, so it's Edge, your test, and Notepad++, what you do. Again, these are all demonstrated in YouTube videos, and you're going to have a demo test to practice this before you come to a test. But this is what you do. You do your programming in Notepad++, because it gives you syntax highlighting and indentation and all those good stuff. And a little bit of help, like IntelliSense in so in in Visual Studio, so you don't you don't misspell the SDR len, you don't misspell the name of the classes and stuff, and then you copy that, you paste it in the answer as code. So you have to click on this is a code and then paste it. And I am extremely ex extremely sensitive about that. If after four months of programming, you cannot still indent your code properly. You don't deserve to be marked. So I want your code to be indented properly. It doesn't have to be right. Indented properly and submitted as a code. So I see the code over there, syntax highlighted, colorful, so I can pass through things quickly and easily, and I can mark you. I created a program, a rubric program myself, that in detail tells you what you were marked on and what your mistakes are. You're going to see that in the comment of your, of your test. And if I see, so the very first two questions my rubric asks is, is the question formatted properly? If my answer would be no, it simply gives zero and tells you why. And I copy that one. The second question is, is the question relevant to the, is the answer relevant to the question? What I mean is that I ask you to write a function to do, print something, you write a perfect function that reads something. Although your function is perfect and you have written something beautiful, it didn't answer my question. That doesn't have any partial marks, okay? That prevents copying from reference sheets, okay? Other than that, if you write FOR and a for loop is involved in a logic, you get marks for it. Okay? Everything, every single thing you do gets partial mark. I don't do zero or nothing unless it is zero or nothing. If you are actually answering the question, every single thing you write will be marked. And I am an easy marker in your terms. Okay? I mark very generously. You will see it. Okay? Uh, so uh, it just to... Just to put an emphasis on that, in 27, eight years of teaching that I had, I did not have a single appeal on the way I marked students, ever. No student could ever successfully, I didn't even have an appeal, not to have an appeal and lost, ever, never, okay? Be aware of that, okay? Marking problems may happen, I may mismark you, I may, do something like that. That's why I give you opportunity to take a look at your marks. And you can always come back to me and tell me, for that I answered this part right and you didn't mark it. If that's the case, I'll mark you. So anything, so you, you, I, I encourage you to go through your test and try to scrutinize every single thing that I have done to see if I marked you properly or not. And you see me, if anything is mismarked, I will mark you. I will give you a mark with no questions asked. 
these are th stuff for you. Go through it, student Blackboard Ultra stuff. And that's that. And everything's in a grade book, so you're going to see exactly what we have and everything are there. Um, and that's that. Uh, questions? Before go we go for a break, what's the time? Wow, it's 10.56. <clears throat> Any question? One? You, have a, you look like a question. <laughs> you look, ah! Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm just trying to look for the information you, you show here, but I, I think I couldn't find that. Exactly the instruction for the test. Instruction for the test? Yeah. Oh, it's not there. Okay, okay so, so instruction for the test, the one that I told you, instruction for the test, I will create a demo test. I will create a demo test. And in the question of the test, there is a link to a YouTube video. You go in there, it tells you how to do this test. And when I post that, go to the lab on a school computer and do it so you can practice it. It will be coming. Thank you for the question. It's not there yet, but when I give you the, the demo test, and a demo test is going to be something very simple. Uh, probably I'm going to even give you the answer. So, so I'm going to say just edit this and put it in. I just want you to learn how to use Notepad++ to do your things and copy how to do that. And when you do that, you can actually, and I will make the answer immediately visible to you. When you look at it, if you see the code is formatted and highlighted, everything is good, it means you did a good thing. So I'm not going to mark it. You can test it. So that's that. Next question. Any question one? Any question two? Sold. So, questions? One more time. Suggestions? Objections? All right. Break five minutes, and then we'll come back and see what we can do. Oh, another responsibility you have. Very important responsibility. All right. Let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, so, uh, how do I teach? This is how I do it. So, usually when I come over here, first I'll start Visual Studio 2022. Three years later, I'll go create a new project. And uh, actually, one thing that you have to always remember is always pull before you do anything in a repository. Always pull before you do anything in a repository. I'm trying to find out where are my notes in here. 22. Let me pause it. Sorry, this is a backup computer. You know that, right? So, so then I will actually uh, go to the repository, I just pulled it first, obviously. You can even do it over here. You can go GitHub, Tortoise Git, and you can say pull before you do anything in it. And now it pulls it. It's up to date. I'm ready. I'll go in here. I'll go to ZAA. I select the folder. Make sure this little thing over here is checked. Place solution on a project in the same directory. Why? We are in kindergarten with, uh, with respect to computer science, OK? We don't have a solution that has 50 projects in it. We have one loop that wants to print five numbers. We don't, like for that, a project and a solution are the same. We have one thing. So place the solution and project in the same directory for now. Uh, when we come to inheritance and stuff, you'll see then I have like 14 things in one. But now it's just like that, right? So, and I will name the project as follows, 01 dash, that's January 10th. So that's going to be the today's session. And then three years later, when it actually creates it, I'll come over here. I'll do the update later. And I'm going to right click over here, add a uh, new item. And in here, I'll go prg.cpp. Then I'm going to say include io stream, no.h as in C++. OK, then I'm going to say using namespace std. I'm going to use all the standard stuff of the language. Then I'm going to say int main, no void in main, return. 
And then in here, I'm going to say insert into console output. Hello, OOP244ZAA. And then after that, insert an end line. Control F5, compile and run. It compiles, it runs. It demonstrates how it happens. And that becomes our lecture. Then after I'm done with my lecture and telling you, I do everything through coding. So I just write the code and I'll show it to you how it's done. Okay, that's my style of teaching. And then after this is done, um, I'll close the thing because the session is over. And after the session being over, I'll go to that beautiful repository of mine. Right click, commit. Now I'm going to say all, which means select everything. So this is adding. And now I'm going to say uh, January 10th, hello thingy. And I'm going to say commit and push. It does them both at the same time because usually you want that. Okay. You can, you can select to only do uh, uh, a commit and then the, do the push manually. But I do it both at the same time. As soon as I do that, when we go to the uh, repository, we will see that, not note archive, but th this one, you will see in ZAA we have hello, January 10 hello thingy. If you click on this, it diffs it, which means it displays what's the difference, you see? It shows what was at left, nothing, and what was added. Right? If it was, if this was your, if this was your help request from me, and I had for that fixes, if you clicked over here, it would have shown your code, and in here it would have shown what was the changes. Okay? So now it's doing that, which I doesn't matter, and you can do it for individual files. That shows all the files, but you can actually go to the directory, and go to the place that you want to. And then you can just click hello thingy for this. If you do that, it only shows the changes made in this file. Okay? So this is a, v and all these things are available on your local computer too. You don't have to do it in here. Again, Git is like that. I'll explain it why. Okay? So that's that. After this is done, you can exactly see what I have done in class. Therefore, I come to the next thing. For all the beautiful people with their computers. We have one language processor, not two. When you are using a computer, all you are doing is when I am actually talking, you are occupying your language processor with the junk you have in front of you. Therefore, you're not going to get what I'm saying. Okay? Typing is happening not with your brain. All those people who know biology, what do you call this thing over here that use the autonomous stuff like breathing and stuff? Anybody knows what that was the name of that part of brain? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. But you use that to type. You don't use your brain. Okay? Because of that, it doesn't come to your brain to get submitted to anything. Go to the dollar store, dollar tree, whatever you want, pay two bucks, get a small notebook and a pencil. And just write the parts that you think is important in that notebook. You are actually now using your brain converting my speech into analog writing, that commits it to your memory. These things don't do beep, okay? It's just a fact. You are free to use it if you don't believe me. That's very fine. No problem. But if I ever see anybody smiling at their screen, whatever deity you believe in may help you, okay? If I see you are sitting on <laughs> to your screen, that's extreme turnoff for me, okay? But if you believe it helps you, sure. I just gave you scientific fact, okay? It's not something that I make up, okay? Uh, anyways, and uh, uh, yeah, some, some people are geniuses. They have five language processors. That's one in five million. If we are, we are one of those things, quit Seneca, go work for Google right now, okay? You don't need to be in here. Anyway, so, um, so that's that. Um, yeah, so the next thing. So that's what we do. Yeah, computers are nothing but distractions, sadly. 
Mm, so that's how I teach. Now GitHub. What is GitHub? Who knows what is, uh, okay, actually let's, let, me, let me give you some history. Who knows what, who is uh, Linus Torvald? Who is Donald Trump? That's sad, really. You know who's Linus Torvald? The person who created Linux. He actually wrote Linux in his basement, okay? And it, it was so good that because of, of its goodness of his heart, he actually gave it for free to the world. And since then, it became the largest open source collaboration in the world. There are 20,000 developers and organizations now contributing code to Linux operating system. Okay? Bananas. Okay? Then, and all these things don't get submitted to the core of the language, just uh, core of the operating system, just like that. Somebody has to double check them. Not every garbage goes in there. And it was extremely hard, so Linus gave up, couldn't do it. What did he do? He created Git. Git, the software Git, Linus Torvald created this to watch over code and every single aspect of change that has happened so you can actually decide which part goes where and what you're going to do with it. So Git is like big brother, watch it. What's happening to your code? Whatever you have in your Git repository is supervised by Git. And the beauty about this software is that it's distributed. It's not client, client server. Client server. Client server programs are like your website. You have a browser, client. You hit a website. Where is that website sitting? In a server somewhere in the world, right? And you, you deal with it like that. So you, but Git is not like that. The Git instance that is installed in GitHub is identical to what is installed on your computers. They are identical things. That's why we call it cloning. So you create a Git repository on GitHub, you clone it on your computer. Your Git on your computer has all the capabilities and powers of what you have on GitHub. And when you say clone, it simply brings everything. You change something, you say commit, it happens on this computer. You are not pushing anything. You keep changing, you say add, you are actually telling to the, when you, when you call the add of Git, you are telling to Git, I want to add this file under your supervision. So you are telling to Git what to look for, what to look after, let's put it that way. When you commit, it commits everything and becomes a turning point, I told you. You can keep doing that on your local computer with no internet connection. And after three days, you can say push. It simply passes everything upstream. Where is upstream? GitHub. All the things, the history and everything that you have done will go to GitHub. Then you clone that GitHub repository in your matrix. So you want to submit an assignment? Who uses FTP? That's like, so yesterday. Clone it on Matrix, go on Matrix, and do pull. It simply gets all the changes on Matrix. Why transferring files? Thinking, oh, this is binary. Oh, that's, why? Dude, like, work like professionals. Like, seriously, FileZilla? Like, I, I, I was 15 years old, I remember working up with seriously? Like, don't, don't work with those stuff. You know what, and, I, and they're all in Workshop Zero. You can actually do that. Go install all these things in your Matrix account. Act like a professional. It's beautiful, okay? And GitHub is a company that saw the opportunity. Oh my God, we have this Git. And if you have a Git on your computer, she can clone from your computer the Git on her computer. And you can collaborate like that, so you don't need GitHub. But GitHub said, we need a center of place with security to make sure the code is secure, we can make things private and public so not everybody can see, and it's controllable, it's manageable, there is a used web interface, they called it GitHub. In 2008, 
and it was open source free for everyone. So anybody who did open source with public repository used to use it for free. But then, and if you only had private repositories, you had to pay to them. So after a while, at 2008, Microsoft bought GitHub for $7.5 billion. Billion. That's like a budget of a country for two years, okay? So it's something like that. So bought it like that, and since then everything is free, even your private repositories. So if you can, you can create that, and that's what you are going to create. You cannot create public repositories. Yes, sir. Oh, that means commute is coming, which means soon I have to drive home. I put everything on my calendar. My calendar, that's why, that, so you know I'm on the road. You cannot have an appointment with me. So anything I do, if I could, I put, put uh, going to washroom as an appointment, but I can't. Okay, so it's actually telling me that in around, uh, oh, five minutes before we start, let's lose it. So, <laughs> thank you. All right. <clears throat> so, so that's that. So this is the history of Git and GitHub. Every single commit that you are doing is you're adding to a dollar to your reputation bank account on GitHub. When you Google your name, when they Google your name three years from now, when you, two years from now, when you graduate, when you Google your name, GitHub accounts comes up, they see you have 3,598 commits in past three years in GitHub. That's immediately taking your resume, putting it in an interview. Immediately. It means you're a professional programmer. You know how to collaborate. Then they're going to go on your GitHub account and look at your repositories. If you have written any code that you're proud of, not your assignments, not your schoolwork, do something because those are private. Those are Seneca property. You cannot make it public. You make it public, you are cheating. Remember that. If you have a public account with your assignment in it, automatic cheating. Careful. Okay? Uh, you have to make it private. But write any code of your own, anything that you're proud of, anything that you work out. And that's how you learn programs, programming. I don't know. Uh, you want to keep track of your finances? Write a program for it. Don't go buy some accountant thingy. You don't need to do that. You know how to do addition and subtraction and average stuff. Write a program for yourself. Very simple program. And then keep adding to it and make it better and better as you go. Make that thing thing. So I'm doing my finances with my own program. It's a text program, but it does it for me. And put that on GitHub. I did that myself. These things count. So when I give you this GitHub thing and I tell you to create a thing, it's not only OP244. I am helping you to get hired. And believe me, that's the case. If you Google someone's name, let me see, actually try something in here. I'm going to pause it for this. Um, so if uh, something that I forgot to mention, so I'm going to actually use this opportunity to do them both. He was my 345 uh, student. And he was one of the first people who work on uh, one applied research that we had that is this. Big blue button. So what happens, this is the correct thing. I mean, uh, uh, OP244, is, let me just make sure that I'm at the right place. It is OP244ZA. So I don't cancel classes, people, OK? If something goes wrong, I'm going to go online. So this is IPC144, uh, uh, sorry, OP, uh, OPZAA, uh, OP, OP244ZAA. Emergency session. Use a headset and mute. Uh, join with microphone. I'll explain what it is. I thought I did it for all my sections, but anyways. Students must wait and sessions. So this is a so, so this is gonna be so you're gonna see this when you click on that. When you click on join session, this is where you come into. 
This, be proud of this. We have Seneca code in here. When I say Chad, Chad is one of the big guys in, in this company now. So for eight years, we've worked on this. So this conferencing system that is being used with in many different places, big blue button, is something that we have lots of code in. Seneca students, many of them are working in here. So when you see that, you select microphone. Never use listen only. If you come in as listen only, I'll kick you out. You don't need to be there. I don't want people who listen. Full, full duplex, remember? So use your microphone. And if you are listen only and you don't have a microphone, so I'm on no reason, again, go to dollar store, buy a microphone. If you don't have a microphone and for some emergency thing, mention to me, I don't have a microphone, I'm going to use text. But I'll, I want listen only. I want, a, I want a microphone. Come in with microphone, allow, and select the device. And when you are talking, make sure, one, two. You hear that echo? You must hear that. Also, you should see the green thing going like that. That means the system can hear your voice. It means your microphone is set up properly. If not, change your microphone to the proper thing. Click on join audio. And then after you joined, immediately Ooh. mute yourself. You will see the slides going to come up. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to talk. You can ask your questions. So it's as if we are sitting in a classroom. No difference. Everything's going to work perfect. And the good thing is that I can randomly pick up a name. So I simply say, choose a random thing. You see your name comes on a screen, and you're going to answer my questions. The one that I'm doing in class, usually I go around. It's, it's like that. So if something goes wrong, we do it like this. And again, it's recorded. You can find out. So I do not cancel classes unless I am incapable of sitting behind the computer. Okay? If I can sit behind the computer, then the class is not canceled. We go online. If you are two people sitting by side by side, extremely important to have a headset. Because if one speaker's voice goes to the other's microphone, you will get a feedback. Okay? Make sure you have a headset. Okay? That's extremely important. Um, and that's that. So let's end the thing. And end session for all. So uh, we didn't get to, because of the technical difficulties, uh, we didn't get a chance to start the object orientation, which is no problem. We're going to start it in lab. So when you're coming for the lab, I'm going to go through the whole philosophy of object orientation. So you will know exactly what object orientation is and what you are going to do to the end of the semester. So in one session, I teach you all. The rest of the semester, I explain how to implement what I, thought, what I taught you in that one day. Got it? So have a coffee, something. I think it's 8 o'clock in the morning, right? Take the 6 o'clock bus. Make sure you're here on time. OK? So we're going to do that, all right? All right. And don't forget, you're going to have a quiz on the addendum and all the stuff, and you must get 100% in it. Questions? Suggestions? Yes. Oh, quick question. So no suggestion. It's a question. Yeah. OK. Just, just check it. So uh, overall, for Mac users, can we use Visual Studio Code or no? If you use Visual Studio Code, you're on your own to set it up to use the comp uh, GCC compiler on G, G++ compiler on your Mac. If you can set those things up, Please record it and give it to me so I can give it to others too. Okay? But Visual Studio Code doesn't allow you to debug your program. It, no, no. It, it doesn't help you debug your program. With, with uh, Visual Studio, you press a button and it walks through your program. So you can track the execution and try to find your problem. With code, you can't. Okay? Uh, or maybe you can. I don't know. Try to find out how it's worked. If you can do it, sure. If not, then I don't know. What is with Apple? Come on. Seriously? Yes. Uh, my bad. I'm also using Apple. But I know. No, no, no. no. So, I don't like it. You guys like it. Whatever you like, that's what you do. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but, but when I try to do the cloning like, uh, from my local computer to here, I just don't really it's, know. It's not reverse. It, you don't clone from here. You clone from there. You create yeah, it. Yeah, like mm. I'm saying, you know, I, is there a function like Oh, no, 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 no. Guys, 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 guys. Guys, Mac is command line. You have no visual things to get. 
So the right click pull that I do on Windows because of Tortoise Git that I installed. Tortoise Git, if you go through workshop, Tortoise Git is a shell that you install. Essentially with a mouse, it, it does the command line for you. If you want to clone on Mac, you have to say clone path of the repository, hit enter. And you have to set your SSH key and all the good stuff. <laughs> pull, you have to say git pull. <laughs> you have to pull. So everything in Mac, it's so if you want to clone, it's git clone yada yada. And you can do all those things on Windows too. If you're a command line person, do command line. There's no problem. But everything is command line. All right? Like matrix. All right. Any other question? Suggestion? Objection? And all those people who have long faces, I see people like this. Don't. Come on. We're going to have fun. Okay? So please. You're one of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now you're laughing. All right. <laughs>